Hey everybody, welcome to part two of building a removable tube front or bash bar on my pro car. I'm just gonna start by showing you like basically how to make a bash bar that fits an OEM bumper or an aftermarket bumper really snugly. The easiest way to do is start off with some masking tape. That doesn't tear, hold on. So what this masking tape is going to do is going to give you a line of reference that you can measure from. Typically a bash bar we do four bends. You'll do two on these corners and then you'll do two in the middle to get the shape. So with that I can measure off of this line to each point where I need to put the bends. So I know that if I'm measuring 19 inches here and then I'm measuring 25 inches here. I know that I need a difference in distance of six inches because I just subtract them. And then I can plug that into my uh, computer and get the bend angles that I need. So this is by far the easiest way. I mean, if you put it on the ground, you could try and measure up and inside into the ground, but this is easy. I mean, everyone has masking tape. So I'm gonna be bending up two of the bash bars and I went ahead and bent one already. And then I'll just show you quickly bending, doing the four bends um, on the second one. But I have the first one here that I whipped up. Um, so it's really simple. In my tube bender, I have to leave just a little bit of extra tubing on the end so that it fits in my die and then I cut it off to the fact. But when you slide it in, so the bend is right into the corner here and then we're touching the front of the bumper. So we're touching the front of the bumper on the front and just on the side with maybe a quarter inch of play both ways, which is perfect. Um, I'm gonna position the bash bar in a way that the bumper will actually hang off of this. So the front of this bumper is gonna have really good support because the whole thing is gonna be able to sit on top of this bash bar. So when it's all welded to the car, this will be up inside like that, giving us a really tight fit and a really solid mounting point to the chassis. And then we don't have to do too much work to hold this bumper up. All we gotta do is bolt it into our fenders. The rest of the weight is held by our bash bar. It sounds easy when you say it, but uh, getting that fit with everything level and square to the car is a bit of a dance when you're holding all the parts on the car. But I mean, it's like 20 minutes of messing around and holding stuff and tacking and, and checking. Um, it's not too bad and I gotta do it twice. So we'll have a good opportunity to show you guys. Then I'll take everything off and show you the finished product. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode. It computes, so two at 10 and a half. Cut them, notch them, don't need to bend them. Weld them on, it's perfect. So just to, because I tried to vlog on my own, <laughs> it didn't work. People were walking in, I had to answer my phone, forgot to hit the button, didn't know how to focus. It's not cut out for it. So I, I leveled the bumper with my level floor is a bit uneven but the car is leveled so I leveled the bumper with the car and I've got two toe plates just under the corners of the bumper um, and yeah I can just as long as I can hold it here I've centered it I've checked it to the frame rails now I can go ahead and tack in my bash bar to my tube front then when I take it off I'll re-level or I'll check the bash bar again just make sure everything's square true all that once I know it is I'll put the welds on it 
and then uh, this part of the task is done. It's it's really not that difficult for, for you guys watching. The hardest part would probably be to bend it, uh, to bend the tube, and the rest is just as long as you got a little bit of time to mess around with it, it's easy. So I'm gonna cut a couple tubes for going right here. They're both gonna have a straight notch on either end, but they're gonna be rotated to each other because this tube's on an angle, this tube's going this way. So basically I take the tube, I notch one end, put it on, Describe a line that's the center line of the other tube that's going through it Put the other notch through there simple as that for for me It's simple just because I've done it so many times, but I'll try to show you guys how I do it in detail Ooh. Okay, so I've got Four tubes made, there's three in my hand, one on the car. They all have a 10 degree notch in them. The 10 degree notch holds it straight to this tube. And what I need to do now is scribe the center line of my bash bar intersecting with this. And I'll scribe the line right on the side of the tube. How that looks is I put this in the center and I just put a little hatch. So basically, I know that the center of the tube needs to run through it this way. And you can see that the center of the tube this way is slightly rotated from this one. So it's not perpendicular perfectly. It's probably at about a 70 degree angle. Um, so when I go ahead and notch this through, I'm gonna put it at the same angle as this bend, which is 20 degrees because the tube is gonna come perpendicular to this tube and since I bent that at 20 that means I can notch this at 20 and it's all gonna work out you just see but when I put this on the lathe I basically center this with the center of the hole saw so I just rotate it and I make sure the hole saw goes straight through this way and everything works out it's not really any way to mess it up unless you don't scribe it properly so little tip and a little trick so one other thing that I do in conjunction with getting the rotation right is I'll just put a line on the top side on a certain angle because I know that I'm putting a 20 degree notch into this tube but when you get over to your machine your tube notcher it's kind of hard to remember if the larger side of the notch should be on this side or if it should be on this side it sounds silly but you get it messed up all the time. You think it should go this way. So this line just tells me that the larger cutout needs to be here and the smaller cutout needs to be there. That's all that line shows me is basically the direction of the angle. You gotta do something like that because you definitely will mess it up and then this whole thing becomes scrap. So another tip and another trick. So when I put my tube onto my notcher, I know that the hole saw needs to run through, through this line and I know that I need to angle the tube this way because of my scribe there. Without that line, I wouldn't be sure which way it needs to go, so this just tells me how the notch needs to be. I know it's 20 degrees, so on this, I lift and rotate. Each click is 10, and otherwise, I just eyeball that line center with the hole saw, and it's as simple as that. You can see that here's the notch angle of the upright and then this is my bash bar going through the tube the rotation is a bit weird there's no way you could have really measured this unless you had like a scan or a cad file for it so this is definitely the fastest way to do this i'm simply just going to take the minimal amount of a notch which basically is the hole saw cutting through the tube while still leaving the edges untouched and i'll show you what i mean here in a second So what I mean with the edges untouched is you can still see bandsaw cut edge here and here. That's essentially the amount of prep that you're gonna need all the way around as a bevel. You want at least the wall thickness of the tube all the way around so it looks something like this because that's gonna give you the best weld penetration for doing this. Um, you should always bevel it. You can't really just leave it because the weld won't have a chance to get into the material. 
And the way we bevel it is just on our belt sander here. I'm gonna show you guys how that fits after I do the other three. So with the helping hand of the cameraman, so you kind of missed it, we tacked the bash bar in place. The bash bar is touching the bumper all the way, so it's actually acting as a support for it. So it's just tacked in place. The height and everything's good. We're just gonna add a corner brace from here to here with some thinner tubing. Just so if you bump somebody with the corner, this would fold really easily otherwise, right at this point. So with a little brace, it'll be able to take some hits without collapsing because we don't want it to collapse on minor stuff. We may, I need to add a gusset plate on this side and on this side for a toe strap. So we'll put a plate in the corner, gusset, we'll put a hole through it and that's where our toe strap will be. And then we just need to do it all over again with our second front end. And that's about it. Other than we're going to be adding some uh, little wireframe construction to pick up these uh, fender mounts and then we will be adding a mount for some hood pins and the mounts for our headlights which I said in the last video we are going to water jet cut the headlight mounts we've got a big program running on the machine so we don't have time to cut it yet but that'll be a pretty straightforward procedure because uh, the way I designed them is you just fold up the tabs and it bolts right to the headlight and then you just need to weld it to the front end so we can show that process in the next one, kind of the fit and finish and the powder coating of the front ends. And that'll conclude our removable front ends on this car. What is he doing? on X game mode. Is he on? <laughs> you lassoed yourself, bro. Almost. Hey, come on. Okay, so here we are. We've built our second tube front bash bar setup. The first one sitting here on a couple boxes. The next thing to do is what arguably takes longer than the bash bar itself. Things like hood pins, fender mounts, headlights, and all those little details. So I'm going to show you guys how I would mount my hood pins and make brackets for it and also how I'm going to make brackets to the fender locations and uh, how we get the right height and everything to level it. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to put my hood pin and install it into my hood and let it hang. And while it hangs, I can then position my fenders. Basically, the hood needs to be between the fenders. And because these fenders are fiberglass and although they're very close to perfect, this Wonder Glare kit is one of the best I've seen. It's never going to be perfect. They're still going to flex a bit. Ignore that sound. You can edit it out. So the hood needs to be between the fenders. Both the fenders had a nice tension on them um, pushing into the hood. So right now, like you can see this corner, the hood is lower than the fender, but it doesn't actually really matter because the cool thing about these hood pins is they have about this much threaded rod on them, giving you the ability to raise and lower them. And then also they come with little rubber bump stop sleeves so you can thread a nut up, put the bump stop sleeve on, and the hood will sit at the perfect height that you want to set it at, and then you're done. And the hood pins are by far the safest way to mount and keep your hood down and secure. So if you bring the camera in here and kind of swoop in under, we can get a look at this hood pin just hanging here. This is exactly the position that I want to be putting my um, standoff. And the standoff is going to be made of um, some of this. This is three-quarter dom with a 120 wall. It's uh, it's basically steering shaft tubing. We could go with a bit thinner wall, but this is good solid stuff. So I'm going to cut this, machine the ends flat, put a nice chamfer on them, and this is going to be my um, little hood pin bung, you could say. And when I weld it on, it's going to be an inch tall, so it's going to give me lots of room to weld my connection points to it and uh, make for a really solid mount for the hood because arguably the hood, although the hood mount doesn't need to be like crazy solid, um, it still needs to be able to prevent it from lifting up and uh, structurally not rattle around and things like that. So 
it's better to make everything stronger than uh, too weak. So watch me do this. It's not too complicated. I never know what to say. Yeah. Parts like that. Well, let's, let's do it together, but you guys aren't involved. Yeah, watch me do it. Here we go. So are, you want to be filming some stuff or what? Uh, you don't want to see the stuff on the bandsaw. The bandsaw is boring. I'll let you know when I'm ready for the lathe. <laughs> ah, need two M6 nuts. Two nuts for the boys. Oh, I got them. So these are going to be my fender standoffs. The fenders are fastened to the car using M6 bolts usually. So that means that on my tube frame, I need to have an M6 nut. Somebody's calling me. The M6 nut, the hex happens to fit really nicely inside. So I'm just gonna tack this on in four spots, um, grind it flat. And then that is gonna be my little pickup point for the front mounting point of my fender. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And you can do this a number of different ways. Um, you could just have a plate go out to it, drill and tap it, or weld the nut underneath it, or whatever. You can do a number of different things, but this is how I'm doing it, because it looks kind of nice, and it just happens to work, so, and it's fast, so. That's it. So these are, what it looks like. Just four tacks on a nut, face it on the lathe. Now I can use these to mount the front corners of my fenders in the spot that I want it. Open her up. Do the old install. There's one. Okay, so. The next thing is position the hood the way you want it. Make sure the fenders are nice and level. Right now they're just kind of sitting where they sit. They're bolted at the back, but not supported at the front. Put everything where you know that it's gonna be parallel. And with those now pieces floating, I can now build my structure to them. So it's really easy to do that. I'm going to be building it off of my framework. So essentially what you're gonna see, is kind of an A-frame. So I'm gonna have a tube here, and I'm gonna have a tube there. And then off of this frame, I'm gonna make one more attachment that's gonna connect my hood pin. So it's all gonna be connected within one little A-frame, and it should be really solid. So I just take a couple measurements. My fender's not moving, it's in the position that I want it in. So I'm gonna cut one tube, seven and a half and another one at around seven and a half so keep it simple whenever you're making an a-frame it's basically an isometric triangle you can just do two of the same length and uh yeah should look clean nice and strong let's do it so the really nice thing about this size of tubing is actually the less prep you do to it the better weld fit up you have to Further explain that, I'll just tack this. And if you just take a look, it actually gives you like a perfect weld prep area for the weld to sit in. And uh, it just makes for a little less work on your end and a nice fit up and finish as the final product. And there you have it, a super solid corner mount for our fiberglass fenders that holds it exactly where I want it to hold it. So from here, I drop my hood back down, figure out where I want my hood pin to be, and then I just duplicate everything I did there over here. Control, Alt, Duplicate. I'm pretty much done, other than headlights, which I told you we're gonna be CNC cutting out of sheet metal, so it's gonna be relatively easy to do that. I can 
just welded right to the tube. That makes it so easy. Makes it so easy. Super sick, super slick. So just by chance, I planned on putting a little piece of tube about this large in between this mount and this tube, but it actually worked out really nice and it landed right on the tube. So we can pretty much just go ahead and weld this up and I'll show you how the weld kind of looks with the prep that a smaller diameter tube has when it goes to a larger, it's really nice. So we'll do this again on the other side and that pretty much wraps up doing a removable tube front I mean, there could have been a part three if I really extended it on, but part one and part two should give you guys the lowdown on how to do this stuff. So if you have any questions, ask us in the comments. Otherwise, watch me weld a couple little tubes.